Good evening guys, F4H, Rosso here, and we're back with some GT Sport action. Today we're going to jump right into it with the Manufacturers Cup. Final season now, so this is where it starts to get interesting, starts to get serious. You have to strap on the serious pants uh, and really sweat. This one's for the World Finals. And you're joining me here today at Dragon Trail Gardens, uh, or the track with the worst chicane on the planet. We are driving the Alpha Group 4 today uh, for 13 laps of this tricky technical circuit that should suit our car pretty well and basically have joined me on board for my qualifying lap. So we're about halfway through, a little bit of understeer through the hairpin. But yeah, this uh, qualifying lap set quite early in the session, this one. Basically my first flying lap, unable to improve for the rest of the session, just a few mistakes here and there, but nice to be back. Um, for those of you that don't know, I picked Alpha for the Manufacturers Cup, and that's what I'll be focusing on this season, really. I feel it's probably my best shot at a uh, World Finals place. That's if the uh, qualifiers for Alpha from the Asian and America's regions do well, but we'll, we'll have to see. But yeah, approaching the final part of our lap, heading into the tricky uphill double left-hander. It's blind so you have to kind of well I say guess but remember I guess where the track is uh, very difficult because you can't see the second apex but we got out of there quite nicely and we're gonna cross the line for a pole position so fortunately no one was able to beat that lap time for the rest of the session despite the fact that I couldn't improve so we've set ourselves up fantastically well for the race itself so let's see how we do So here we are, confirmation of our pole position, narrowly scraping in ahead there of the Portuguese in second. His GTR going to be very strong uh, off the line and in the early part of the race, so we'll have to see how we do there. Uh, quite a decent mix of manufacturers in that top 10, uh, and to be honest with you, the field not spread by a huge amount, all the way down to 18th, basically split by just a second, so I'd imagine that the battle is going to be fierce. So, let's jump into the race and see how it pans out. So the GTR already large in our mirrors and rather unhelpfully the game starts us redlining in first gear. So it's going to compromise our run down this long front straight. The Alpha quite good around this first sweeper but the GTR already has his nose up the inside. I try and defend a little bit, we make a little bit of contact but just enough room left on that inside. Watching it back probably could have given him a bit more room. But he's up my inside into turn two. Nice and late on the brakes. Again, very close between us. But it's going to compromise our run through this second phase of the chicane. The GTR already really good out of the corners with its four-wheel drive system. And he needs no second invitation for that one. So he streaks up our inside. And we enter the second sector in second position. So not a disastrous start. But not the ideal start but uh, you can already see that it's two quite different cars obviously we mentioned when we were recapping the grid that there was a lot of different manufacturers in that top 10 uh, and these cars are, are no exception to that rule they're both fast but both fast in different ways the GTR with its four-wheel drive is great through that first sector after the chicane whereas these uh, tight and twisty middle uh, sector uh, uh, and the sweeping corners through the middle sector are where the alpha shines so nice exit through that quadruple right hander and we're just going to size the skyline up into the double left hander not really ever wanting to make a move just trying to force him into a mistake really but he pays me back for my little feint with uh, a little stop on the apex just there which basically ruins all momentum that we could possibly have had out of the last corner we've lost quite a quite a bit of time out of the final corner due to that so looking in the mirrors a little bit more uh, than we want to at this point a gap of just over half a second to the Lexus just behind us because of that little uh, touch out of the final corner as you can see again just highlighting that difference in styles and difference in uh, in approaches as we're super fast through that chicane but as soon as you show that GTR a straight off like a rocket so first lap complete 
as I said, not a disaster of a start. Nice and clean. Everyone got away pretty safely. Some uh, pretty intense battles going on down in the pack, as you can see by the track map. Uh, all the cars really closely gaggled together, fighting for position. A lot of points on offer for this lobby. The winner will get just over 2,300 points, so a lot to play for and a, a decent start to this final manufacturer's season and we'll touch on that uh, just while we're on the subject so for those of you that don't know this is the official FIA uh, backed manufacturers series this is the final season so this is the one that matters uh, I've picked Alpha as I said earlier in the video for the manufacturers cup um, basically the way uh, that you qualify for the world tour is the top 16 manufacturers the top drivers from uh, those manufacturers uh, basically qualify as we head wide on the second lap on that final corner it doesn't look like a massive moment that but believe me my wheel was almost snatched out of my hand at that point I thought I'd thrown away the race so a uh, bit of a, a hairy moment that one a couple of brown skid marks left behind us at the final corner uh, and not from the car but yes manufacturers uh, cup um, basically as I said already top 16 manufacturers qualifying this is uh, the the final season so this is the season that matters the the ones that have come before this were essentially glorified test seasons or seasons in which you get your S rank in which you need to qualify so um, very important this one and obviously the aim for us is to uh, give a, uh, a really good effort towards qualifying so we'll be focusing on the manufacturers cup uh, this season the nation's cup uh, I think for me is probably unattainable seeing as uh, there's only three spots for British drivers and Great Britain is insanely stacked uh, with some incredibly talented drivers, some incredibly talented drivers so um, definitely going to put the focus on manufacturers cup but yeah lap three at this point and we basically settled down into a little rhythm but the GTR is probably slightly better than us in this phase of the race he's got those nice fresh tyres to lean on with his four wheel drive power so this is his basically his chance to get away this is where he has to maximize his 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 strategy this uh, part of the race is critical for him basically basically this is where um, he will make all of his time and where he basically has his chance to win the race he's trying to put as big a gap between myself and him as possible uh, and the pace is pretty fierce I mean in the meantime we've dropped off third position by a good amount he's two seconds behind us at this stage after just three laps so we're both pushing extremely hard and as I say strong in different areas he's struggling a little bit now with tyres makes a little mistake through turn one and we close up quite a decent amount made a uh, just under a second I would say uh, through that mistake so hopefully back into a, an area now where we can once again benefit from the slipstream but as we said earlier in the race, that GTR, an absolute rocket out of the corners, so very difficult for us in the little alpha to gain any benefit uh, from uh, a good first sector because that four-wheel drive car just so, so fast uh, out of those chicanes. But we're going to keep stalking him. The best thing we can do at this stage is keep the pressure on, save fuel where necessary or, or where possible, I guess. The issue you have with the alpha is you have to rev it so high that fuel saving doesn't really tend to work in the group 4 car. You will save, you just lose so, so much time. Uh, the car likes to be revved up high, so the, the time that you save, or the, with the time that you save in the pits by fuel saving, you probably lose that and a little bit more by not actually going to your, uh, your pace in the race. It's a difficult one. I mean, if you're stuck behind someone, then yes, I would always recommend fuel saving. Uh, use the toe effectively, change up nice and early. Uh, it's always beneficial in that situation to, to fuel safe. But in this situation where we're both hitting a, a pretty solid pace, I think the best thing for us to do in this phase of the race is to uh, run to our, our maximum pace. We're putting in some pretty solid laps at this point. Closing in the gap to that GTR, who I suspect at this stage is just starting to struggle ever so slightly with tyre wear this is where it's our phase of the race so this last couple of laps of this stint are going to be our time to shine this is where we will win, win the race this is our win condition so as I said and it's the theme basically throughout the entirety of the video two different cars two different approaches so it's going to be uh, uh, one of them that, that comes out on top in this one uh, but we're relying on that four-wheel drive 
I'd caught to lean on its tyres a little bit more than our little mid-engine rear-wheel drive Alpha Rocket. Nice and light as well, so hopefully a little bit better on its tyres than the GTL. The GTL is going to be slightly better for fuel than us, uh, as it revs a little bit lower. But it will, it will be close. We're closing up, as you, as you can see, through that middle sector where the Alpha is strong, closing up, setting personal bests each sector again through this triple right hander we're, uh, we're eating him up and we've got a great run out of uh, the Istanbul style corners suck up a little bit of that slipstream and there's going to be no feints this time we're going for the move we're already well committed nice and late on the brakes and it's pretty much a slam dunk just spot that exit for the final corner get on the power nice and early and uh, that's that one made for now but the gap between us isn't massive just three tenths of a second quite easy for us GTR to spring a move onto us through this first sector we've got to make sure we get this first corner right little kiss of the apex on the inside and definitely at this point that GTR's tires 100% starting to cry foul as I said this is our point in the race where we've got to maximize what we can do as I said, also, uh, I suspect that the GTR at this point has been a little bit more economical on its fuel than us, so very important that we enter this critical pit stop phase with more fuel, uh, with as big of a gap, sorry, uh, as possible, just so we don't get jumped in the pits. I think if we come out behind the GTR for the second phase of the race, it's going to be very difficult for us because the second phase is going to be a little shorter. We're going to pit at the end of lap 7, so just after the halfway point of the race. Shorter second stint, the car's going to be a little bit lighter, uh, so we want to maximise that with the fact that we uh, have a nice fresh set of tyres to put in some fast laps and really uh, utilise this Alpha's potential through the second half of the race. So we need a good lap here, extending the gap out as much as possible, just really concentrating, really focused at this point, making sure to hit our braking points, make sure we're kissing those apexes. A little bit more difficult uh, on this new tyre model since the update. Uh, I've seen a, a, especially a difference in the, in the way the Alpha handles in Group 4. I think uh, it's definitely a little bit more leery now with the, the mid-engine rear-wheel drive cars in Group 4. They seem to be more on rails before the tyre model was changed. Definitely a little bit slower as well in terms of outright pace. Uh, so still have to be quite careful. The tyres are definitely uh, a little beat up at this point. We're uh, we're struggling for grip. We're, we're kind of making time in the fact that we're getting pretty light fuel wise. The car's definitely faster down the straights than it was at the start of the race but at the same time we're losing out quite a lot uh, through the, the twisty sections heading down to the hairpin, again hit those marks, kiss the apex and concentrate on that exit, just building as big a gap as possible to the GTR in second and we've done a pretty decent job at this point, it's 1.7 seconds as we head through what I think are probably the trickiest sequences of corners on, on the track, the deceptively difficulties, especially with the new penalties, so since the last update obviously we've had a new time model but also they've uh, been a lot stricter on the penalties uh, for quite a few tracks and Dragon Trail Gardens is no exception so through that sector you used to be able to really abuse the kerbs a little dip on the grass here and there uh, now you have to stay well away from them same as that chicane in the first sector uh, which was already horrible enough but now that you can't really even touch the sausage kerbs it's even more difficult I think we're gonna dive into the pits we made a really good amount of time on him through that last sector. 2.6 seconds as we enter the pit lane and strap on a new set of the mandatory hard compound tyres. The pit crew get to work with basically the agonising wait for a fuel stop. Feels like you're sat there forever and very luckily we come out just ahead of the GTR. And you can see just how good that GTR is on a new set of boots. Look how easily he cruises up our inside. Very important at this stage that we try our best to defend. And again, we're on the outside through the chicane. But I've learnt my lesson from the first time. And I take a deliberately slow line through that second phase of the chicane. 
just to make sure that that, that GTR just cannot get on the power. Uh, so he can't basically repeat his move uh, of early race. We're going to have to go defensive into the hairpin as well. Again, as late as we dare on the brakes, a little touch as we both turn in. Kick of oversteer and he's going to get a good run on us once more. So again, we're going to have to be mindful, go defensive. It's going to be a very good move if he can make it through through these S's. And he's going to think better of it and let us go. It's compromised our line through that first right hander though. So we're going to have to be really neat and tidy through this left. And we've defended that one well. So hugely, hugely close through that pit stop phase. The last sector where we gained about 9 tenths per second. Absolutely crucial towards retaining our lead into this second phase of the race. Now this is defence defense mode. Defensive 101. That GTR, as we saw early in the first phase of the race, extremely fast, extremely good, uh, especially out of the corners. And because this second phase of the race is shorter, he's he's going to give it everything. He's uh, not got as much of a concern when it comes to tyre wear. Uh, as, as I said, the second phase of the race is shorter, so we're going to have to drive extremely well. Blasting through that long left-hander of the first corner taking that really nicely but a bit late on the power just being a bit too conservative through that first corner not really wanting to make a mistake but at the same time not doing as much as we could be doing to uh, maximize our pace essentially just being a bit too cautious and the GTR once again really 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 fast out of the chicane at this point in the race he picked up a little bit of a penalty uh, I believe through the chicane so uh, at that point that kind of saved us, he just bled off a little bit of it before the hairpin, quite clever from him actually, he knew that realistically there wasn't really a move into the hairpin, he was a little bit too far back, so he chose to lift and coast, bleed a little bit of the penalty off, which is very smart driving from the Portuguese, and once again he's extremely close through this tight middle sector, fortunately for us, not really any passing opportunities through here, no big breaking points, we're just trying to be as tidy as possible through this triple quadruple however many right handers are there it feels like it goes on forever but suits this alpha perfectly that sequence of corners and once again we're able to put just a little bit of daylight between us and that red GTR but here he is once again very large in the mirrors and again just being a bit too cautious out of that final corner luckily he gets a kick of the grass but still extremely close just four tenths of a second and closing at all times He's definitely going to be on us again out of that chicane. Both setting personal bests at this stage of the race again. The pace is uh, is fierce as we break hard at this right at the curb on the right hand side. Just miss the apex. Little dip on the brakes for the right hander and then hard on the power up the hill. Just be careful not to clip that sausage curb on the inside. I did that in season two and it rolled the car, so definitely stay away from those. But once again, he's got a great run out of that chicane. We're going to have to go defensive. Again, he chooses not to fight and bleed off that penalty. Uh, he definitely had a decent chance of an overtake there, but uh, I think as lap eight, it, it potentially would have been a similar result. He might have been able to get a good run out of the hairpin, but again, very difficult to overtake into this fast flowing section. So. I think perhaps he's taken the, uh, the correct decision there once again. He's uh, driving pretty tactically, which at this point of the race was quite concerning for me, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I think I felt as though he thought that there was an area where he was definitely capable of going faster and he could quite easily make a move if he wanted to. So that had me worried. Um, I was basically trying to size him up, trying to think, where is he? Where is he sandbagging at this point? What, what, what has he got up his sleeve? Um, and just basically, again, relying on the fact that my car was going to get better through the stint, just doing my absolute best to do the lap times I knew that the the Alpha was capable of. Even through that lap there, we, we hit a 138.6, just shy of the uh, the purple lap for the race. So we're, we're motoring along even with the, the GTR right behind us putting a lot of pressure on us. Once again trying to be super tidy through the chicane, avoiding those sausage curbs like the plague. And we've made a good amount of time through that first sector, so 
at this point I'm thinking to myself, perhaps the uh, danger phase of the, of the race is over, but then all of a sudden the, the, the GTR pulls four tenths or five, basically half a second on me uh, out of that chicane, so again I was going back to thinking, so that's that's where he knows he's fast, that's where he knows he can get me if he wants to. So. Uh, yeah, alarm bells ringing, but at the same time, just trying to concentrate. We, I, up, yeah, up until this point, not won uh, a manufacturer race in, in quite a long time. So uh, I was feeling the pressure. I mean, I've been doing this uh, sim race in Malarkey now for a, a good amount of time, about 10 years. I started on Project Gotham, so um, should really be accustomed to this kind of pressure at this point. But uh, I don't know. Gran Turismo does something crazy to me. <laughs> I was uh, definitely uh, under pressure at this point, just willing myself not to make a stupid mistake. It was kind of, as much as I was battling the GTR, I was battling my own mind as well, it was conspiring against me, trying to talk me out of the fact that I could potentially win this race. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, there was a battle going on in, uh, in my metaphorical helmet and a, a battle going on on track. It was a very uh, intense race. But two laps to go. We are edging ever closer to that elusive victory and those beautiful 2,300 points. And as you can see, the Portuguese has disappeared from behind us. He's no longer in second position. He has gone. I don't know what happened at turn one. Uh, unfortunately, I uh, forgot to save the replay. So uh, I can't actually tell you what happened at turn one. But he has disappeared and it is no longer the GTR in second position. It is the Frenchman who had a great first stint where he, uh, he rose up uh, through the order. Fantastic pit stop phase as well, so he must have saved a good amount of fuel. Um, and he's, he's paid the dividends for it. He's running in second position, a little bit wide through that first right-hander, which kind of compromises us for the left as well, so losing a little bit of time. We've got a nice 2.4 second buffer at this point. You would not believe the wave of relief that washed over me in my creaky seat uh, when I saw the Portuguese drop into third. So, uh, yeah, as I say, that, that second phase, in fact, the whole race was inten an intense battle. It was uh, definitely uh, one of my more difficult races. But we're going on to the final lap. Just again, focusing on getting a nice exit. The 4C still handling remarkably well, all things considered. Very decent car in Group 4, kind of semi underrated, I think. The only issue with the 4C is it's very situational in where you can use it. Handling tracks or tracks with tight, twisty technical sections like Dragon Trail Gardens, it can do okay. Um, but if you put it on tracks like Tokyo East Outer Loop or, or anything with a, a remotely long straight like the new track, for example, the track that I can't pronounce, I'm not going to try, um, it, it gets eaten alive, so it's a, it's a difficult one, very difficult to, uh, choice or car to pick, you have to pick it at the right point. Brands Hatch is also very, very good. Um, but yes, into the chicane, uh, into the chicane, into the hairpin for the final time. And we've really basically maintained that 2.5 second lead that we had over second position. So uh, again, at this point, I'm starting to get excited, just making sure I don't make any mistakes. Nice and tidy. Driving well within the car at this point, just making sure that I bring it home. Maximise those points. Those points are going to be very, very important to us, I feel, at the end of this season. Time the fuel quite nicely. 0.7 of a lap to go, so probably could have cut it a little bit more fine in the pits, but it's always better safe than sorry in these races. The last thing you want is to uh, go into some horrific fuel saving mode in the second uh, stint of the race, especially when it's the one that you really want to be going fast in. As we round the final corner, and it is a first position. Hugely, hugely happy with that result. We had to fight really hard for it, but a pole position, not quite a lights to flag win. We had to fight, as I say, quite hard for that one. But a really, really great result for the Alpha that, and that puts us actually 18th overall uh, in uh, the EMEA region for the first round, which for, for the Alpha is an absolutely magnificent result. Really, really proud uh, of that one. But yes, uh, thank you uh, for watching, guys. Appreciate you all. Uh, I say you all, the people that are watching, um, coming back. I, I appreciate it. it's been a long time 
since I last made a video and I apologise for that, there's a few different reasons as to why uh, I've not been here for a little while but I've basically changed job now uh, so a lot more time to dedicate to things that I love and that includes GT Sport so expect to see a lot more of me and a lot more of videos like these in the coming weeks as we enter Park Ferme to savour the moment first position in the first round of the Manufacturers Cup 2018. I've been F4H Rosso, really hope you enjoyed the video guys and I will see you all very soon.